What then are the results of poor biosecurity or poor hygiene or cleanliness in the farm? The results will be diseases and pests. If biosecurity measures are not put in place and looked into, then the results we get will be detrimental. Disease management, which is a costly affair, will eat into your profits as a farmer. This is because you'll spend so much money and time trying to cure diseases that are affecting your flock. You're not going to enjoy your profits, and in turn you become a frustrated farmer. Common diseases that may appear without proper biosecurity measures will be diseases like Newcastle, fallpox, coccidiosis, infectious coryza, among so many others, and even parasitic infections. All of these diseases will lead to an unhealthy and unproductive flock. Look at a disease like coccidiosis. You will notice that your birds will not be feeding well, they will have ruffled feathers, and there will be a distinctive change in the color of their stool, from brownish to reddish as the disease progresses in the birds. A disease like fallpox, you will notice the crusty spots or lesions on the parts of the birds that are not feathered, like the wattles in the feet. What will happen is that you will spend a lot of time and money trying to treat these diseases. It is important to know that if you do not put in biosecurity measures, then there is no way you will become a successful farmer. No way will you succeed if you do not look into biosecurity measures in your farm. Now that you know the definition and importance of biosecurity, it is now time to understand how proper biosecurity will be achieved in the farm. We are going to look at several things that will be required for you as a farmer to look into and adhere to them in order to achieve biosecurity. Secure the animal housing and the farm. Ensure that the poultry house is well fenced so that intruders do not get a chance to come into contact with your flock. Additionally, it is essential to make sure the housing does not have spaces for various pests and predators to make contact with your flock. As you can see in the pictures, the house is fully secured and there is no space for rodents or intruders to enter. Proper ventilation. To minimize aerosol transmission, Maximize ventilation so that fresh air is provided to all animals and humidity and bad smells do not build up in the poultry house. Keep the amount of dust generated to an absolute minimum in the animal housing areas. Dust can damage the protective cells in the respiratory tract and expose birds to contaminated particles that will in turn cause diseases. It is important as well to make sure that you have proper spacing at the tops as you have seen in the pictures and you can provide curtains by improvising on local available material like we, we can use we can make use of the sacks that we buy the feed from we clean them and disinfect them and use them to control in the air that comes in and out especially during the cold or wet weather. Proper spacing between the birds. Avoid overcrowding your birds. This is to reduce the direct contact transmission in the flock when there is a disease, as well as the aerosol transmission. Use the recommended spacing, 2 to 3 square feet per bird, to ensure that we are not overcrowding our birds in the poultry house. Cleaning the feeders and drinkers. This should be done every morning. Empty the drinkers and the feeders from what has been left over in the night. And use a proper or a recommended disinfectant to clean the equipment. Preferably, you can sun dry them. 
to be able to kill the germs, especially also if you do not have a disinfectant. Changing the litter and disinfecting the chicken coop. Litter management is of great importance in a poultry farm. Wet litter promotes the growth of pathogenic bacteria, molds, and parasites such as coccidiosis. Controlling litter moisture is one of the most critical steps in avoiding ammonia buildup in the poultry house. Litter tanning should commence on noticing the onset of caking. By tanning, we mean helping aerate the litter so that it decomposes. Litter that is too dry and dusty can also lead to problems such as dehydration and respiratory diseases. A good rule of thumb in estimating litter moisture content is to squeeze a handful of litter. If it sticks tightly and remains in a ball, the litter is too wet and needs to be changed. If it sticks lightly, it has the proper moisture content. If it will not stick at all, it may be too dry. It is important to use a good litter material that absorbs the excess moisture in the pottery house environment, such as wood shavings or sawdust. The pottery house should be thoroughly cleaned and disinfected and rested before introducing a new flock. This can be done using a disinfectant. Mix the solution and spray the house using a hand sprayer or a knapsack sprayer to cover all the areas of the pottery house from the roof to the floor. This will help to kill any germs that were in the environment. And when we rest the house for two to three weeks, we break down the cycle of any infection that could have been present in the pottery house. Food storage. It is important to have a separate store where you keep your animal feeds. Don't place bags of feeds on the floor. Choose a wooden rack where you can put the bags or alternatively get a container that can be, you can be able to cover tightly once you empty the feeds into it. Again, do not place this on the floor. The store should be clean, dry, well aerated and free from rodents. Water and food quality. The water you give to your birds should be clean and free from pathogens and also fit for human consumption. If you're using chlorinated water, ensure during vaccinations you boil and cool the water before use. This is because chlorine is known to reduce the efficacy of vaccines or the vaccination process. Ensure you are also feeding your flock the recommended daily intakes of a balanced feed that has protein, carbohydrates, and minerals, and with an added coccidiostat in it. Water and feed should be fresh every morning. Remember to change the water and the feed every morning.